What's going on y'all and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. I know it's been a hot minute. I apologize. There just hasn't been too much stuff I really want to cover. Some of you guys were calling out that I haven't made a video in like two weeks. But we're here now and we have the Thursday 9-12 bounce adjustment. The thing that got pushed back because of the ESUB and WC. And speaking of, don't forget to tune in tomorrow. We are wrapping up. I'll be there casting. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see you guys there to see the uh, grand finals of the uh, culmination of our tournament. But regardless, that's not what we're here to talk about. Let's go ahead and check out these balance patch notes. I did peruse. I was talking with a few people about this stuff, but I do want to talk with you guys. Still relatively my first impressions, um, but I did take a quick glance, a little spoiler, and I did see in the comments that a lot of people are upset, in particular about Pirate Captain Flan. And I do have a few things to say about that, so stay tuned when we get to there. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and check it out, break it down together. So first on the list, we have Judge Kise. And I was actually on my live streams talking about, you know, I always try to guess... And see what chat thinks is going to be the most uh, buffed unit. Not most buffed, but what they want buffed and which one is most likely. Um, and I was actually... One of the units that I was thinking, Lionheart Sermia, made it on there. Just because she's kind of been pushed out of the meta. Not kind of. She's very very much been pushed out of the meta. And units like ML Paulus really hurt. <laughs> and so when you're about to see what she's changed... I think a lot of y'all that like Lionheart Sermia, especially now that she has a skin um, that looks amazing are going to enjoy this. So let's go and check it out. Judge Kisei number one. Uh, End of Evil, I believe, is skill two, and then Wave of Light is skill three, right? Yeah. So End of Evil, and by the way, Judge Kisei not too long ago got a significant round of buffs. Um, a lot of people were on the fence on what, how good they would be, and in hindsight, they were definitely good, but not quite enough to make her, you know, really, really usable. So we're giving her another round says Smilegate, and let's see what they're doing here. Uh, End of Evil is now going to... Uh, it already dispelled all buffs, but we're going to apply a 100% chance to uh, decrease hit chance, like the blind. And then a 75% chance to decrease defense for two turns, which you already had. But we're also going to increase combat readiness of the caster by 25% per target. This is similar to, like, uh, Faithless Lytica. Where uh, if we're hitting four units, that should give us 100% combat readiness. And unless there's any CR manipulation, right? Negative effects on our opponent's team. Um, this is our extra turn, right? And we can see here the Solbrin is getting taken out. And now we're going to be able to ignore effect resist to make sure, you know, we can um, we don't have to build effectiveness if we want. There were previously some builds that either, you know, you build her high effectiveness uh, for the debuffs, the skill pushbacks and things like that on uh, like Wave of Light. And then the defense breaks, or you just build her giga damage and you try to kill your opponent. Now I think we have the best of both worlds, where we're gonna we don't need a soulburn to grant an extra turn. So if you guys just want an extra turn and do giga damage, you still can. Um, and on top of that too, right? They don't have the uh, unable to be counterattack buff. Instead, the skill can't trigger counterattack. So this is there's some ups and downs for this, but I, I like this change. And additionally, we can now ignore effectors, so we can just kind of have our one build probably just a ton of damage. And uh, if you want to make sure you strip, right, strip annoying buffs, whatever, apply all the debuffs, then just bring a soul burn, bring some books, bring some artifacts that provide souls. Uh, Wave of Light. Let's go and read the Awakened version. Attacks all enemies by distorting space and time. Uh, wait, there's nothing green here. Oh, damage dealt increased. Okay, so most likely they're just, the damage will probably stay the same. Um, I, I would guess. Let's see. And here. Here, uh, damage dealt increased based on the number of targets removed with a slight increase to its base damage as compensation. Okay, a slight damage to its base. I wonder how that's going to shape up. I'm assuming, is that going to be actually then a slight damage decrease when there's four, but then like a little bit of an increase at three? Regardless, um, I don't think that part's too important. It's mostly the shift around of all the extra turns in Soulburn. So, uh, Judge Kisei fans out there, I think this is good for... Um, builds it'll be a lot simpler to build her i think and i think she's gonna be a lot more effective especially as like a cleaver so uh we'll see like as i always tell y'all i'm not a judge kisei player i love how she looks but i'm not a judge kisei player so you guys will have to test her out for me now lionheart sermia is definitely one i can comment on i think a lot of players really like lionheart sermia she's usable in a lot of different builds you can play her very aggressive you can also build her as like a more defensive kind of um you you know you build her uh to just combat all those extra tax counters I like to build her a little tankier, but I've seen some high, high damage builds, especially when things like the Golden Rose and people are building pure damage. But now she's kind of fallen off because of units like Emma Politis, like I said in the opener. And as I didn't think they were going to go this far, but she is going to straight up now going to just lose her fighting spirit. We've seen units in the past lose things like focus, 
things like fighting spirit, change their mechanics up when Smilegate needs to change up their whole kit, right? So this is almost like a rework. Um, but it's going to be very significant in how much we get to use her because now we don't get hard countered, uh, especially in the draft phase. We don't have to worry about um, bringing Politis against certain units like ML Politis, just to name one. And now she's actually going to even be kind of a counter because Emma Paulus does have like a, a dual attack, right? Built into her skill one. So I like that a lot. Um, can you handle the heat? So we just kind of remove the fighting spirit because now it's going to be based all off skill um, cooldowns, right? Let me see here. The I am the victor is the skill three. It's going to have a four turn cooldown. Before it would be fighting spirit. If you weren't aware how it works, you'd have to build a fighting spirit, which you would get a ton from her passive when they press a dual attack, counter, extra attack, blah, blah, blah. But now instead, we're going to start the fight with our skill three ready just be aware guys we're not gonna have the defense buff and if you notice she does scale off defense so you still it depends if you want to rip it early or not because typically uh the big damage is going to come when you get that you know when someone an at when an ally suffers this extra attack counter attack dual attack you activate shine which increases your defense right and efforts which is kind of uh it was actually pretty important but more importantly is the defense because that's going to provide both uh you know defensive mechanics and damage because she's a defense scaler so just be aware that even though you start now, you start the battle with uh, full cooldown, I mean, you can rip it. If you don't have the defense buff, you still might want to wait, just depending on the scenario. Really depends. Maybe it's going to be like an ML Senya situation where you just want to rip it because you're expecting to get the cooldown reset on top of it. But uh, yeah, just something to be note of, to take note of, I should say. Kind of like maybe Karina. Um, but other than that, guys, I like this, right? So we don't have to worry about units that stop fighting spirit, that stop resources. We're going to be able to use her in more of the field. I still don't know if she's going to be a meta unit per se. Um, like if like if this was live, I don't think we'd see her like in the E7WC finals necessarily because there's still a lot of problem units that can really shut her down. But one of the biggest ones in terms of resource reduction is gone. I do want to make a quick note though, guys, that I don't like... I mean, there's not a lot of solutions, so I don't really know what Smilegate needs to do instead. But bringing out problem units like C Phantom Politics, which I was not happy with, just because she shuts down so many units that aren't even like that strong or need to be addressed, like Lionheart Sermia. And now the solution is to kind of just remove her original mechanic, right? Her original fighting spirit. It just seems so backwards. And now we got to wait for other units that also, you know, if we want them to be viable, to also get their mechanics changed. But regardless, I'm happy for Lionheart Sermia. The skin looks so dang good. I'm excited to play it. All right, now guys, this is a big one. And I want to talk about this real quick. <laughs> uh pirate captain flan i already saw this too guys so i'm with y'all i saw that you know some things would be uh could be considered a nerf or it definitely is a nerf i think both the soul burn removal and the chance to steal a buff because a lot of times you could steal things like immunity and then apply like the the stun however before you you know you get too crazy or too upset about that i think the skill three is one of the most stacked changes i've ever seen beyond like a full rework we're gonna get a built-in um increased crit hit resistance by 70 percent um which is just like we're just gonna get the uh, navy captain landy treatment insane right and then on top of that yes we can't steal the buff here in s1 however using scourge of the sea and now this new thing time to pillage our whole team will be able to steal a buff too so there will be some changes it's not all positives right and i know this is a change this is going to be a nerf for some of y'all but i think the s3 is so powerful guys that in my opinion I think this is overall going to be a net positive change and it always sucks guys in the past you've had units like martial artist ken get changed to where you know it's a complete adjustment where you have to rechange his entire gear set because of how they change his stats on his rework i even saw in one of the previous patches when death, death dealer ray got buffed guys a lot of people in the comments initially were upset because you'd have to change and adjust but look how powerful he is now so it's not a perfect world it sucks having to change things it sucks having to readjust gear, play style, team comps, whatever that might be, right? Some of you will have to change this Pirate Captain Flan, um, you know, the way you play her and use her, gear her, whatever that might be. But I think overall, in just terms of getting her um, more playability, it should be a net positive. It doesn't make things right. It doesn't make things um, easier. But yeah, I do think this is an overall going to be a buff and a pretty big one if I think how, how powerful this skill 3 is. But... Once again, I'm not trying to make y'all those those of you that are upset about this. It does suck. But try to just roll with it. And if you are truly a Pirate Captain Flan lover, I think in the long run, it'll just make her better, much better overall. All right. Speaking of uh, these next changes, I think are going to be a lot quicker, though. We have units like Abigail, 
who I think this is very big, right? Dispel all debuffs from the target, where previously there's so many units that have debilitating debuffs like Unbuffable, and you wouldn't be able to apply Immortality and Vampirism. Now it's going to automatically proc, so that's very, very cool. Um, additionally, I think she's just going to get increased effectiveness as well, so that she can land the uh, full strip a lot better. I kind of like that. It's a lot of free stats, and uh, but she already, I think, she, yeah, she already had the Dispel all. Right here, just showing here on the Awakening, we got a free of 50 effectiveness. Okay, I think Abigail is a nice um, rare pick to kind of stop certain comps, but she also, just like Lionheart Sermia, will still have some hard counters, guys, so be aware of those. Now, here's an interesting one, Alencia. I actually forgot Alencia existed, and I used to love playing Alencia. But with the units like um, ML Shu out there, it just doesn't seem like, you know, there's ever reason to pick Alencia unless you don't own units like ML Shu, right? She's got power crept out of the meta. However, let's see what they're going to change. Uh, the Soulburn is not going to change to ignore effect resist completely. Which, uh, she used to get some free effectiveness right here in Mind's Eye. So a lot of times, unless you're going, to, unless you're hitting like uh, Soul Weavers or something with high ER, a lot of times you could just kind of debreak them anyways because of just the free effectiveness. So I don't know if I like this too much because we're going to lose the two-turn defense break. Um, however, I think the Noble Blood is going to be pretty significant in terms of changes. Mind's Eye now is going to proc. I think I think what they're saying here, I quickly read this, but it sounds like, guys, that they're going to just... Um, both effects, the Trample and the Initial Hit, are now going to provide injury where previously only the uh, Trample did, right? So you should get overall more injury, and additionally now we're going to get increased combat readiness, and on top of that, a free 20 crit. So a lot of free stats, um, depending on what you want to do, guys. What artifact you're rocking? Remember, a lot of these are warrior artifacts too. I think even Alencia's own, right, has a lot of crit chance. Um, I think people were sometimes were rocking like Edward Elric's FMA Brotherhood collab Artie, and now that you have a lot more crit, maybe injury build will become a lot better. Otherwise, stay on destruction, and I think the injury combat readiness is just going to make her feel a lot better. However, I don't know if she's going to be better than Shu, so. For now, I still probably will use ML Shu when I need injury versus those mega tanks. Uh, last but not least, I think we're kind of winding down here. Shooting Star Katie's. Guys, this unit has always kind of been a fun kind of gimmick unit. She really, really, if you want to like build Exodia in your team comp and you get the combo going, it's really cool to have like an infinite buffed unit. Uh, but I think they're kind of just streamlining this to make her a little bit more usable. I don't really know. Um... She gets like an attack up. They said they make her AI better for auto battling. It is what it is, guys. If you really love shooting Star Arcades, it's kind of cool. But um, yeah, don't expect too much. I think she's still kind of just that gimmick fun character. And I think units like that are fine. I, don't, I think this is more of a filler buff. But if you're an SSA main out there, let me know if there's anything I'm missing with this change. Uh, all right, we got the artifacts here. Otherworldly machinery. And I kind of like this. We just get a free 10 crit. Otherworldly machinery was kind of outpaced by a lot of artifacts, even ones that do AoE. So now increased crit hit chance by 10 is kind of cool, especially for newer players that um, maybe pick that up in that uh, story, side story thing. Uh, Fan of Light and Dark now is going to, let's see, green 50 and 100, 35 to 70. Okay, so now instead of 35 to 70, they're going to make the crit hit damage two turns. It's just going to be a lot more reliable, especially when you max limit break it, because it feels bad to miss this 30% chance, even if you have like a plus 30 one. So yeah, anyone that was using Fan of Light and Dark, Always a good change. And they do this a lot. They're streamlining a lot of artifacts to just be a lot more reliable and, and kind of touched up. But I don't think, I don't know. I, I'm not really using that artifact too much right now. All right. And like I said, guys, I know some of these just sit tight. Um, I know, once again, last thing I'll say, just to reiterate, this doesn't make, I, I'm. Uh, let me see how to phrase this. It's going to suck, right, initially having to change your play style, having to change your gear, having to change your team comp. You, uh, strategies that you used to use may not be effective or may not be even possible now, especially for things like Power Captain Flan. But a lot of the changes that Smilegate has done in the past, if I look back on them, because hindsight is 2020, um, they've been overall much, much better for the unit. So if you love Power Captain Flan, just sit tight. I think this is going to make her a lot better. You will have to adjust. But yeah, I know this does suck initially, okay? All right, guys, not too crazy of a patch. Let me know what you all think. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys tomorrow there at the E7WC. Catch you guys all in the next one. Peace out.